Hey everybody, and welcome to another Learning Statistics with Jamovi video with me, your friend, Dr. Alex Swan. All right, so we are going to switch gears in this particular video from what we've done previously in the series. We're going to jump into experimental designs. And for this, for this particular video, we are going to start our three video series on t-tests. Of course, there are three different kinds of t-tests that you generally learn in an undergraduate stats class. They are the one sample t-test, this video. And then in the next video, we'll talk about independent samples t-tests. And in the video after that, we will talk about paired samples t-tests. So stay tuned for all of those. In particular, this one we are going to use from the folks at Learning Statistics with Jamovi. This is one of their data sets, as I've been using, just so you can follow along. Again, just as a reminder, every so often I like to take, make a mention that we go up to modules and we go up to Jamovi library. And you can see that a lot of the ones that I have already need to get updated. But we are looking for the LSJ. Here it is, LSJ Data, Learning Statistics with Jamovi, created by Danielle Navarro and David Foxcroft. They have their own book associated with this. It's pretty freaking amazing. And I will be integrating it into my class next year. But aside from that personal plug on my own teaching, <laughs> you add that module here and in your data library, the LSJ data appears as a folder. All it does, all this module does, or this package, I should say, all it does is add a folder to your Jamovi um, set of folders to be able to access these CSV files from within the data library. And we are going to be using the Zeppo, as you can see up here, Zeppo. We're going to be using the Zeppo. This is from Chapter 11, Student Grades in Dr. Zeppo's class. And you can see color-coded for t-tests. So we are definitely going to do that, which, you know, I want to mention that um, they <laughs> have used some Marx Brothers names for this, which I... I do love. Uh, so we have Zeppo, we have Harpo, and we have Chico. So we are going to be talking about uh, we're going to be talking about these three dudes because Harpo is going to be in our next video with independent samples t tests, and Chico is going to be in our next uh, in our video after that doing paired samples t tests. So we have Zeppo open. Uh, I am using the most updated version, version two point three point three, released uh, earlier in April twenty twenty two for this video. So here we have a set of twenty students. Twenty students. And um, we have just their score on a statistics test. Now, you can see that they have scored um, as they have. These scores are in numerical order from lowest to biggest. So it's pretty, it's pretty rough. It's pretty rough here. Yeah, we got a 50. Apparently, this is out of 100. Dr. Zeppo grades his class out of 100, but also grades on a curve. So he uses an average of value of 67.5 to find out how he should handle a particular class. So we're going to do a one sample t-test to find out whether or not this class needs a curve or not. So how we do this is we go up to t-tests and down at the bottom of this list is one sample t-test. I'm not sure how this list was arranged, but it certainly wasn't alphabetical order. So we're going to click on one sample t-test. Okay. And we only have two variables. One is the ID, so we can ignore that one. So of course, we're going to put X over in the dependent variable. Okay. Dependent variable here. Now, before we go over, because things are already checked and ready to go, we are going to do some additional some additional test statistics stuff uh, in the options here before we take a look at the output. OK, so tests by default students T created by Fisher is selected. And you could also use the Bayes factor here, uh, much like JASP has modules for frequentist statistics, which is what we're doing here versus um, Bayesian statistics, which are, are separate modules in JASP. In Jamovi, they are included together. So if we wanted to, we could look at the Bayes factor here, but you would have to know your prior. So we're not going to do that. Now, the Wilcoxon rank is if we violate a, uh, an assumption or two. Uh, I don't think we will violate normality, to be honest with you. No, we're doing pretty good on normality. Uh, the shapiro vilt test is pretty close to one, which means our p-value is going to be pretty high. Okay. And good note, a low p-value suggests a violation of the assumption of normality. So we can say here with pretty, pretty high confidence, with only 20 people, now we've likely hit the central limit theorem on this set of 20 students test data. So it's likely that we're fine with normality in general. So we'll grab that assumption now. Uh, so we don't need to worry about what that was that was set up to do the Wilcoxon. So we don't need to get the Wilcoxon rank test. Apologies, if, if, like my nasally stuff is, is um, appearing when I try to say that person's name. Next is very important for a one sample t test, the hypothesis. OK, so normally what you'll see are these three radio buttons for the non-directional two-tail test or the directional one-tail test greater than or less than the test value. But the test value is really important, okay? Test value is really important. I said uh, it was 67.5. Before I click away from this or hit enter, this is where you put the test value in, the mean of the population that's already known. So mu, one sample t-tests are almost the same thing as z-tests, which are usually compared to a known mean. We have our, our, our set of values. The difference between a one sample z-test and a one sample t-test 
is we do not know the population standard deviation. We don't know it. And so we have to use the t-test to estimate the standard deviation. That's part of the creation of the t-statistic itself. We grab the standard deviation from the data itself as opposed to knowing it already. So that's how we do a one sample t-test. But we know the mean for the population. And so according to Dr. Zeppo, that mean is 67.5. Now, I don't know how he grades 67.5, whether that's a C plus or something else. Maybe it's a maybe it's a B minus. I don't know. It, it really depends. A C plus. I'm a D plus. <laughs> 67.5 is pretty low when you think about it. If this test is out of 100, oh boy. But that's OK. That's OK, because perhaps Dr. Zeppo doesn't doesn't care that it doesn't care that, you know, they some people scored really low because he curves it. So he brings the nor normal curve to the mean and, and assigns grades based on that. Now, some people like curves. Some people don't like curves. I don't like grading on curves. I had to when I was a grad student for reasons that exist in the department that I taught in. But I don't really like curves. I like uh, giving people the chance to get whatever grade that they think they can get. So we'll go we'll go from there now. I haven't clicked off 67.5. Now, once I hit enter or click off it, you'll, I'll, I'll use the click so you can see me click. The circle will change to blue around the, around the cursor. And when I do that, watch what happens over here. Oh, lots and lots of changes. Okay, so our test statistic got much smaller. Our p-value got a little bit bigger, actually quite a bit bigger. Uh, you didn't see it because it just said less than 0 0.001. But of course, uh, a mean of 72, which we'll see in just a second, 72.3, uh, is, is pretty big. That's a pretty big difference. And that, so that p-value was quite, quite, quite a bit smaller than 0 0.036. So a lot of things changed. And of course, the normality test didn't change. But most of, uh, so two things on this graph, uh, on, excuse me, on this table changed. And then we can see here that our test statistic um, was reported. I also want to grab a couple more things from this. Uh, we can grab the mean difference and the confidence intervals for the mean difference. We can grab Cohen's D and the confidence intervals for Cohen's D. Cohen's D is a pretty good effect size, 0.5. That is medium. We're going to go ahead and grab the descriptive plots. And you can see, I already knew that this was going to be a 72.3. Okay, standard deviation is 9.52. That's pretty good. That's pretty, pretty good. And then we're going to go ahead and grab the de descriptive plots, although the plot isn't really all that helpful. Now, the mean is 72.3, which means that... Um, uh, Dr. Zeppo is going to move his curve over that as opposed to 67.5. So this group of students collectively scored higher on average than what Dr. Zeppo was expecting, which is population mean, which is 67.5. This is 72.3. So about 5% stronger uh, outcomes, okay? 5% stronger outcomes. And this was not due to just random chance. This is a statistically significant difference from his normal mean okay so this group is an extreme group now that doesn't mean that some people scored lower than 67.5 of course that's just a mean of course and people will score lower but it does tell us that there is a difference between uh this particular group of 20 kids and what he's seen in the past and that is how you do a one sample t-test in jamovi if you have any comments suggestions or feedback please leave them down below thanks for watching Ciao.